Yeah, so we are a workforce data company. So anything and everything related to employment will be all over that. So a lot of that data comes from online professional profiles, you know, sites like LinkedIn, job casing, things like that. Uh, there's also job listings, um, and that can either come from uh, company websites. We have a partnership with LinkUp, and they, they do a lot of that. Um, they also come from aggregators, job posting sites. That could also be LinkedIn, Indeed, ZipRecruiter, things like that. Uh, we have data from sentiment providers, so um, Glassdoor, Fishbowl, Team Blind, uh, freelance platform data, layoff filings, um, salary surveys. It's, it's essentially a universal HR database. So you know, think every company has their HR data. They see you know an employee's title, start date, end date, uh, you know who they report to, etc. Um, but they can only see their own their own data. Right, so, so, but imagine if they could see their competitors. You know, there's no scenario where, you know, you're working at um, IBM and you can see the HR data of Microsoft. Like, they're not going to give you access to that. So, so by constructing this universal HR database, we can see headcounts uh, at every company, inflows. So we can see hiring rates and outflows, attrition rates, and how that breaks down by various employee characteristics. So, occupation, seniority, geography, gender, ethnicity, skill. Um, education, you know, anything that's identifiable. And yeah, and then we can see some of these trends. So, you know, let's say a hedge fund might want to know, um, you know, what's the attrition rate of salespeople? You know, if it's high, probably a bad sign, uh, probably a sign they're not going to hit their targets. They might want to know who's winning the war for talent in some strategic area. Um, so we work a lot with um, investment management firms, consulting firms, corporate HR departments. Um, would, would Governments. Would a, would a corporate yeah. HR department be interested in understanding how their competitors are paying, for example? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Benchmarking. Yeah, so within within corporate HR, there's there's comp. So compensation teams are really the only teams within HR that do benchmarking today. Mm. So they're very familiar with this this type of analysis, and for the most part, they've relied on uh, these these like big companies to do uh, salary surveys that come out like annually. They don't really update very much, so. That's, that's an area where you know, I think there's a lot of room for improvement. Um, but also there's people analytics teams, uh, which are really dedicated to analyzing a company's own internal HR data. But you know, they don't really have the ability to benchmark today. So we're, we're trying to enable that, that sort of thing. Uh, so people analytics, comp, talent acquisition, you know, even just understanding who's out there, you know, maybe uh, filtering people based on their experience, their skills, um, you know, their promotion uh, rates, et cetera. Um, and then what else? There's also uh, learning and development. There's a few use cases there. But HR is very fragmented today. Yeah. So I think what they like is that the data set has a very long history and it's got very broad coverage. But, you know, a quant isn't necessarily going to know what is the strategic role within a company. So I think quants have the flexibility of, you know, integrating with other data sets, doing long back tests, um, you know, finding some signal, but they're not really going to be able to extract all the information that you possibly could. So, it, you know, maybe they'll have some hypothesis about, you know, attrition rates of, of high profile roles and what that means. Um, you know, aggregate demand uh, to, that we can see from job posting, certain cultural um, components that we would see from sentiment. Another interesting thing they, they like to do is um, using salaries uh, to predict expenses. Right? If you sum up salaries for the entire workforce, that's 75% of OpEx. And so if you, if you do want to kind of predict expenses um, to back into earnings, you can't really do that without salaries. I mean, that's the lion's share of expenses. So that's another, that's another thing that they use it for. But applications really vary quite a bit. Yeah, that's actually our biggest team. Um, we've got four different technical teams. There's data engineering, data science, economists, and a dashboard team. So the, the economics team is, is an interesting one. You know, most companies don't have a team of economists. But for us, they, they, really, they really do three things. So one is marketing, pretty much. We, we write a lot of content. So we have a weekly newsletter. It's very good, um, written by the economists. <laughs> 
So that, that's just a showcase of what, what we can do with the data, you know, some interesting things that we found, and you know, working with the media to, do, uh, to get exposure to that. So that's one thing. Another is working directly with clients. So you know, uh, anytime we start working with a client, we designate someone on the team, you know, data scientist or an economist, to be the trusted expert on the data, answer any questions they might have. So that, that's a job. You know, that takes some, some time. And then the third is, is prototyping models. You know, they, they're, they're really um, you know, the, first, the first and best users of the data. Um, so that if there's a new data source, they poke around and see like, oh, how can this be used? Um, and like, what's interesting about this? So it's a good team. I think it's a good background for this sort of hybrid role. You know, economists are pretty, pretty versatile, I think. You know, yeah, Amazon hires more economists than anyone outside of the Fed. Right. So it was like a little bit of a, a little bit of a struggle between uh, between Amazon and the Fed. I, I was hoping that tech firms would sort of pull pull ahead. Uh, we're trying to do our part a little bit, but um, yeah, certainly central banks and also also you know, banks banks like actual banks hire a lot of like macro style economists, and we are very much micro focused. You know, we hire we hire labor economists primarily.